sings for me with the works of his mighty hand. And now, let the weak say, let the power because of what he does in what the Lord Jesus, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed breaking bread. And now, he stays true to his word. He keeps all his promises. He has a word. One more time, real good. Oh, Come on, enter into his house with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Any thankful people in the house? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say, give thanks. We thank you for breath in our bodies. We thank you for blood flowing through our veins. We thank you for eyes to see, ears to hear. Legs to walk, a voice to talk. So we say thank you, Jesus. So we say thank you, Jesus. So we say thank you, Jesus. So much to be grateful for. So much to be thankful for. So much to be appreciative to my God for. Lord, we reverence your holy name. And we say thank you. We say thank you, give thanks. I came to give you thanks for all you've done, for all the ways you've made, for all the doors you've opened. I will thank you, Jesus. I present my body in living sacrifice. Thank you, thanks. Tragedies are commonplace, all types of diseases. People are slipping away left and right, but I will. He didn't let none of those things happen to me, so I will. With the fruit of my lips, I'll give you thanks. I give thanks. Lord, we reverence your holy name. We say thank you, Jesus. We give thanks. Yes, Lord. Last time, real good. Say give thanks. Clap your hands if you're thankful. Thankful to the king. Thankful to the master who who provides everything that we need and supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Come on, everybody, put your hands up. the old school one right here. Here we go. Say, come now, almighty king. Thy name to sing. Help us, thy name to sing. Say right there. Say, come now, Almighty King. Come now, Almighty King. Help us, thy name to sing. Help us, thy name to sing. Come now, Almighty. Come now, Almighty King. Help us, thy name to sing. Help us, thy name to sing. Say, we.
awesome God and if we serve an awesome God we invite you this morning those of you who are joining us in the airways and those of you who are in the sanctuary we ask you to join us this morning did you hear what I said I ask you to join me this morning I'm not going to pray for you I'm asking you to join me because right here in this room and for those who are listening, we need God to shift the atmosphere. We need God to shift the atmosphere. We need God to do something supernaturally, abundantly above all that we are able to think or do in this building on this morning. Am I the only one that needs God to move out of this room and do a miracle somewhere? Am I the only one in the room that needs God to shift something in the atmosphere? I feel like pastor right now. I'll just pray for myself. Woo! Woo, Jesus. 
Do you feel the, the worshipers just said we came to praise him? But before that, what did y'all say? Say that again. Oh, give thanks. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. If you want to grab somebody by the hand, grab somebody by the hand. Touch them on the shoulder. If, you want, if they don't want to touch anybody, you might just need to just grab your own self. You might just need to grab your own self and let him do something on the inside of you that nobody knows about but you and him. Father, we come before you this morning humbly. We come to you this morning not for form or fashion. Not because you haven't already been faithful to us. God, we enter this sanctuary this morning with our hearts lifted and with hearts full of thanksgiving during this month. God, we just came back to say thank you one more time. Thank you for blessing us when we didn't know we needed blessings. For keeping us when we didn't know we needed to be kept. God, forgive for forgiving us when we were too stubborn to say we're sorry. God, we thank you this morning for answering prayers when we didn't know we needed answers. God, we thank you for giving us mercy when we needed and we ignored the grace that you had already given us. God, we thank you for loving us when you, oh Jesus, we thank you for loving us when we didn't love of ourselves. God, we thank you for shielding us from the hand of the enemy when we couldn't see the attack that was coming against us. God, we humbly come before you saying that you are more than enough. You are more than enough and we know that you are more than able. Somebody ought to shout more than able to handle those things that only you can handle. You're all more than able to do those things that only you can do. God, you're more than able to do exceedingly above all that we could ask or think. So now, God, you said we could boldly come to you. We come asking. We come seeking. We come knocking. We come anticipating what you would do through this little prayer that we have for you on this morning. And we thank you for in advance. We thank you in advance for healing, for miracles, for opening blinded eyes, for stabilizing minds, for comforting hearts. God, we send your virtue from this sanctuary to every hospital room for healing, for every prison door for freedom for every emptiness and empty heart that you would fill it, for every lonely person that you would give them peace, to the unsaved that you would bring them to repentance, to the saved that you would continue to renew them. Do what you can do, God. And we commit the furtherance of this service and our hearts and our lives for you to do what you can do in us. God, be faithful as you have been. And we thank you in the only name that can keep us in this temporal world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Lift your hands and give God some praise. Our scripture reading. Oh, that's all right. You can give him some more praise this morning. I'm full because God is just that good. I'm full because God is just that good. <laughs> and he's better than that. I know I'm supposed to be reading Psalms 100, but I keep clicking on Psalms 23. Psalms 23 said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You want to say it with me this morning? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Hallelujah. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord's word is blessed. For his goodness and his mercy, for this we offer praise.
today? Anybody grateful today? Come on, just lift your voice and say, for your goodness and your mercy. Make it personal. For your goodness and your mercy towards me And your mercy. And your mercy. Yeah. Toward us. Think about it. For your goodness. Has he been good to anybody in here? Your mercy. Can you lift your hands and tell him I thank you for your goodness and your mercy? For your goodness. And your mercy. And your mercy. Toward us. Toward us. For your goodness, for your goodness, and your mercy, and your mercy, toward us. we offer. Come on, we offer praise today. For his goodness and his mercy, we offer praise. I said for his goodness and his mercy, we offer praise. No, 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 no. Understand the song. For his goodness and his mercy, we offer praise unto him. We offer a head clap unto him. We offer the fruit of our lips unto him. 
for his goodness and his mercy toward us. We offer praise and thanksgiving and supplication. Hallelujah. 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 For all the ways he's made, for all the doors he's opened, for the favor that has been found to our lives, we offer praise. We offer praise. We offer praise unto his great name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give God praise in the house. This is a month of thanksgiving. This is a month of appreciation and adoration unto God. Because the Lord is our keeper. <laughs> the Lord is our sustainer. The Lord is our portion. The Lord is our all in all. Where would you be if it had not been for the Lord on your side? And I know that's the churchy thing to do. Have you ever thought what it would be if God was against you? Have you ever put to, to, to thought what your life would be if God was working against you? But because God is on your side. Sometimes life can work against you. Sometimes people can be against you. Sometimes there are systematic institutions that are against you to try to oppress you. But look at somebody tell them, but because God is on your side, you can make it. Because God is on your side, no devil will get the glory. Because God is on your side, no matter how much you cry, no matter how painful it is, it will get better. If you believe it, I need you to show enough, clap your hands, and give God a praise. What an awesome God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. We thank him for his goodness. We thank him for his compassion. We thank him for him breathing into us the breath of life. And we certainly have so much to be thankful for, so much to be appreciative for. Uh, in the day of the unthankful, we thank God that there's a remnant. There are folks who have come into his house, amen, to say, I have to come give this thanks to God personally. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, I can't send somebody else on my stead. I got to come and do this for myself. <laughs> I was in San Diego last night celebrating my grandfather's 90th birthday party and you know I thought about you know maybe I can just catch him and and uh, go to lunch with them or uh, maybe there'd be another family gathering uh, that I could uh, have an opportunity to corner him and Thank you for his appreciation and what he means to me and, and our family. But uh, I said to myself, no matter how much I'm feeling in my body, I've got to go be there to say thank you. Because there are only some things that you can do in person. And as much as you can send a card, you can send flowers, and you can say, tell everybody I said, hey, being there sometimes to deliver your thank you as the most important thing to do. And I started thinking about my grandfather's contributions and, and trust me, we don't come from a family of evangelists and a family of deacons and family, you know. Uh, my mother was an usher, my dad played the guitar, brothers played instruments, we don't come from a family name. And uh, He's just a, a sailor man who got out of Pennsylvania and and you know, uh, served this country and served in difficult times and uh, positioned our family to be here in the Southern California area. And uh, 
as we sat in this backyard last night after we had dinner, uh, the neighbors uh, that lived next door to my grandparents, San Diego, they had this, I'm telling you, I found Wakanda. I found Wakanda. Uh, I, I found it. It's, there is a place called Wakanda <laughs> that's in San Diego. We literally went to the backyard, and uh, Buddy and Kai, they tell you, <laughs> it was all lit up. I mean, it was beautiful. It was like, man, you had, tr I mean, waterfalls and all kind of like crazy went there. And, and uh, all of my cousins and all the great grandchildren, and everybody was there. And we just had a toast and celebration to my grandfather. And, and, uh, and being there, um, I got a chance to tell him things that I couldn't tell him when he used to let me practice cutting hair on his head. And uh, <laughs> that's why he's bald now. <laughs> there were things I got to, uh, to tell him I appreciated him. You know, I used to borrow my grandfather's soup to go preach all up and down California, you know, because I was a bigger kid. But, you know, so I literally, you know, every time it was time to revival, he knew I'd be there. He said, oh, you must be going to church because <laughs> I would come and literally borrow his soup <laughs> because his measurements fit me to a T. And so to be able to be there, to thank him for, uh, you know, being selfless and being a giver. And every time our car broke down, he would be there to fix the car. And uh, our first bikes, he just was given. And to see everybody pour and pour and pour and pour and see my children get a chance to tell their grandfather, thank you while he's yet here and cognitive and has the strength. And, you know, I, I, I resolved in my spirit there are some thank yous. You just have to show up to give. And since he woke you up this morning, started you on your way, out of all the things that were fighting you to keep you in the house of God, out of every attack that tried to hinder you from coming into God's house, the least we can do, Bethesda, is lift our hands and tell him thank you. The least you can do is tell him thank you. The least you can do, since you're in his presence, is tell him thank you. Come on, open up that mouth. He gave you breath. He gave you hands. He gave you a mouth. He gave you a heart. And the least we can do is lift our hands. Even you in the virtual space, the least you can do is lift your hands and say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being my keeper, for being my deliverer, for being my savior, for being my portion, for being my strength, for not giving up on me when I gave up on myself. I showed up today with intentionality, and that is to say thank you. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Clap your hands and give God praise. Clap your hands and give God praise. Open up your mouth and shout thank you. As loud as you can, somebody shout thank you. Thank you for holding me up despite the tears. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. When I was sinking, oh Shabbat, ah, when I was drifting, you held me up. And for this, I thank you. And for this, I thank you. There's somebody right now in a hospital bed that wish they could come into the sanctuary and give him the thank you that you owe him. Oh, somebody, somebody, somebody. Somebody in a mental institution wish they could come in church and have testimony service. Hallelujah. 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 My soul thanks you. My soul thanks you. Look at somebody say, I have no reason to complain. God's been good to me. I have no reason to be upset. God's been good to me. Turn around and tell somebody else, God's been good to me. And I know he's been good to you too. Come on, clap your hands and give him glory. Come on, thank you. Come on, thank you. With the heart of thanksgiving. We appreciate it. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank Him. We thank Him. We thank Him. We thank Him. Hallelujah. Maybe see the presence of the Lord. I can greet you all in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
We thank God for his hand of mercy, his compassions. We thank God for his faithfulness. We thank God for uh, looking over us. Amen. We thank God for, in times like these, amen, having a savior. In times like these, having an anchor. <laughs> ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. I couldn't imagine. If you weren't there Come on, lift your voice Jesus, I love you Jesus, I love you, I love you Because you care I couldn't imagine <laughs> If you weren't there Ooh, Jesus, I love you, I love you <laughs> Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. Come on, say it. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, yeah. Because you care. Raise your voice, come on, say it. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you, yeah. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. Oh, oh. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. Anybody love him? Come on, say. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Come on, worshipers, come on. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. Come on, say it. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. Come on, somebody, just say something to him. Jesus, I love you, I love you. We worship you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. We worship the Lord. Because you care. Because you care. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Is that car? That song you sing in the car Jesus, when you're just driving you, down the street by yourself. You. Come on, help me say it. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Because you care. Jesus, I love you. Yeah. Jesus, I love you. I love you. I love you, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus, I love Jesus, Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you can. Because you can. Jesus, Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you can. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your compassion. Where would we be? Where would we be if the Lord was not on our side? <laughs> Where would we be if you weren't on our side? We thank you, oh God, with thanksgiving, a heart of appreciation. 
We praise you and we delight in you this day. We thank you, O oh God, for your compassions. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you, O oh God, for loving us beyond measure. I pray, O oh God, today that something be said to us today, uh, that we would re reinvigorate our thanksgiving. Lord, help us, O oh God, maintain a posture of thankfulness. We thank you for the promise of thankfulness, O oh God. Hallelujah. And that promise, O oh God, is that you would bless us beyond measure. I pray that you do the exceeding today. I pray that you do the abundant today. I pray, oh God, that whatever situation, oh God, somebody came in with, oh God, today, that literally they would leave better than they came here. And we thank you for it. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name, clap your hands and give God glory. I don't know about y'all, but I just, I can't half do nothing. I said clap your hands and give God glory. And I'm not going to stop until every hand in this house gives God a praise that he's worthy of. I said clap your hands all you people. We have come into this house to praise the true and living God. Hallelujah. 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 Grab your Bibles. Let's go to the word of the Lord. I've got a few passages of scripture, amen, and so uh, I'm going to have you be seated today if that's all right because I'm going to be bouncing uh, through a couple passages of scripture, amen. We certainly thank God for the musicians, thank God for uh, the ecclesia, thank God for, amen, those, amen, who serve in all facets of ministry. We thank God for First Lady Shorter who took the kids over to the house, so the kids, come on, let's give God a hand, praise, amen. And she took the kids over to the church house, amen, uh, for those who want uh, ministry for our children's church, children's ministry, amen. I know Evangelist Green is coming later with announcements, but amen, our Thanksgiving service, amen, it's going to be this Wednesday at 12 o'clock noon, okay? Doing something different, amen, something different, 12 o'clock noon, amen, because it's about your safety, amen, and I know, amen, uh, uh, it can be a trip out here, amen, <laughs> but we're coming at the same phrase you would have on Thanksgiving Day at 12 o'clock or 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, you have on, amen, Wednesday, amen, so I pray that you'll join us in the sanctuary, we're going to be in the sanctuary, amen, giving God thanks on Wednesday, amen, this Wednesday coming at 12 o'clock noon, is that all right? Amen. To let you get back to your greens and let you get back to your pies and amen. Let you amen. Fight it over. Amen. The last butter ball with somebody. Amen. Over. Amen. At, uh, at uh, Ralph's. All right. So <laughs> we'll let you do that accordingly. Uh, Second Samuel chapter number nine. Second Samuel chapter number nine. I'll keep praying. My Detroit Lions is winning, so amen. Amen. Second Samuel chapter number nine. Then we're going to go over to Second Samuel chapter number 19, and then Luke chapter number 17. Second Samuel chapter number nine and verse number one says, and David said, is there yet any? That is in the how that is left of the house of Saul that I might show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I might show a kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan has yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, behold, he is in the house of, of Micar, the son of Abimelech uh, and Lodabar. Let's go over to 2 Samuel chapter number 19. Verse number 24 says this, and Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king and had neither dressed his feet nor trimmed his beard nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace. 
And it came to pass when he came to Jerusalem, when he come to Jerusalem to meet the king, the king said unto him, wherefore winnest not thou with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, my Lord, O king, my servant deceived me. For thy servant said, I will saddle me an ass that I may ride thereon and go to the king because thy servant is lame. And he hath slandered thy servant unto my Lord, the king. But uh, my Lord, the king is an angel of God. Do therefore what is good in thine eye. For all of my father's house were but dead men before my Lord, the king. Yet didst thou set me thy servant among them that did eat at thine own table? What right therefore have I yet to cry any more unto the king? <laughs> and the king said unto him, Why speakest thou any more of thy matters? I have said thou, and, and Ziba divide the land. And Mephibosheth said unto the king, Yea, let him Take all. For as much as my Lord the King has come again to the peace, or come again in peace into his own house. Let's go to Luke chapter number 17, verse number 11. It came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed in the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And he, as he entered into a certain village, there stood, uh, there uh, met him ten men that were leopards, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks, uh, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan or foreigner. And Jesus answering and said, we're not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, arise, go thy way, thy faith have made thee whole. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, ears have heard. Speak to our spirit man this day that we would forever be thankful for who you are, how you have repositioned us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. For just a few moments, can you look at somebody and tell them there is one? Turn around and tell somebody else there is one. I feel like having church by myself today. I'm going to have a conversation with myself today. And if you indulge me, amen, that's cool. If not, amen, you can go back and break it down in the stream later. But tell somebody else there is one. It is hard for one to maintain a posture of thankfulness without a memory. I find it quite interesting how people want to make history by trying to diminish history. I said a whole lot. <laughs> Try to create history without paying homage to what was. In order for you to maintain a posture of thanksgiving, in order for you even to move into declarative promises of God as he literally attempts to reshape the patterns of your life, it should come with an appreciation for what was. <laughs> Sometimes we shout about change, and, and, and I, I love to shout about change, I love the redemptive gospel. I love the preaching of the gospel that teaches and inspires us concerning the concept of transformation. I think we don't talk enough about the changing power of the Holy Ghost. I don't think we talk enough about the power. I'm, and maybe it's because I don't know what this generation got. I'll just say I'm glad I got it when I got it. 
I don't know how you can sit up in a service and have the Holy Ghost and we don't even get a blink out of you. Just look at somebody and tell them, I'm just glad I got it when I got it. I feel like running down Crenshaw right now. Anybody got the Holy Ghost for real? Let's not, let's not do this. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm glad I got it when I got it. And I don't apologize for having what I have. And I will throw a fit right now because I'm not a revisionist of history. I know what it was. But thanks be to God, he put something inside of me. Changed my life. Changed my heart. Change my complexion. Change me from the inside out. Can somebody thank God for the Holy Ghost? I don't do this digital Holy Ghost. 30 seconds and then you click and swipe to the next 30 seconds. And then you clip and swipe to the next entertainment. It's not even the Holy Ghost. It's entertainment. Oh, Shammai. Okay. That's why you can shout and be just as infeminate. Okay. Live no life, no standard, no accountability, and above all, no conviction. <laughs> Look at somebody and tell them, I'm glad I got it when I got it. Because <laughs> it still convicts me. It still tells me to turn stuff off. It still tells me to uh, uh, get rid of certain people. It still convicts me. It's crazy we don't have conviction no more. The lens of the Holy Ghost affords us an ability, my God, to look back mm. <laughs> with appreciation from where he brought us from because conviction says I never want to go back there again <laughs> and to have that testimony you have to be honest about how ugly it was I don't know about you I don't want to be cussing people out I don't want to be sitting up under a bar all night I don't want to be sitting up drunk See, the new Holy Ghost now lets you do it. But I'm just glad I got saved when I got saved. Somebody say amen. I can shut the Bible down right now and go home and have peace. I'm glad I got it when I got it. Didn't nobody have to hand it to me. It wasn't no e-certificate. Okay. <laughs> Download the app. And you got it. Let's just skip. Let's just skip. Let's just get to it. Our text is found in the book. Of 2 Samuel. It's found during an interesting time in the transition and the lexicons of the history of Israel. They have set in their hearts a desire, king, amen, and the transitions from the periods of the administration of Saul to David come with great challenge and great controversy. David, however, amen, is aware of some covenants and some promises he's made. One of the first covenants is, is, is the desire to get God's presence back. And so the scripture tells us that David makes it his agenda, he makes it his goal, his prerogative, amen, to, amen, reestablish, amen, the glory of God amongst Israel. Having the physical Ark of the Covenant, amen, was a depiction of the glory of God resting upon Israel. That was agenda number one. The second thing that he decides to do once he decides to get the glory back is he remembers a covenant that he made with a friend named Jonathan. 
If you recall, Jonathan is the son of Saul. We know that Saul, amen, was very adversarial toward David and did not like the fact that God moved away from his administration, amen, moved his hand of anointing on Saul, amen, and has now placed it on David. My God, that's a whole lot that I'm skipping in between that, amen, uh, 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 you know, from the time that David's anointed for the time that he takes, amen, the throne is a period of time that many of us would have said, you know what, if it's going to take all this, I don't want to be anointed. And that's why some of you aren't anointed. Because you don't have no stick to itness. I, I just, I just, I'm, that's why you aren't anointed. You want glory without going through something. You want glory without having to make decisions to stick with God. Because the anointing says, I've got to follow God's plan, even if it's for my benefit. Because there's a number of times I could have took Saul out and been justified because the oil's on my life. But because I don't want to desecrate God's oil, I'd rather wait and run. Oh, Shabbat. I'd rather wait and be in a cave and be in God's will than to get anything prematurely. And the problem with so many of us is we got to have it now that we're not anointed enough amen to embrace the process. Look at somebody and tell them embrace the process. Embrace. Tell them take the mask off. I need you to talk. Y'all too quiet in here. Tell them embrace the process. Embrace the pain. Embrace the turmoil. Embrace being misunderstood. Embrace the embarrassment embrace the highs and the lows of it it's what it takes for you to be anointed look at somebody tell them embrace it embrace it and take your medicine <laughs> ah, embrace it embrace it embrace it can't be anointed without struggle can't be anointed without being conflicted sometimes to do good to do good even when bad is an option I'm fast forwarding David, amen, and his desire to want to do it God's way said, you know what? Uh, I can't spend another Thanksgiving at this table. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's going to be some furniture moving, amen, if I got to sit at this table one more time. But because I respect God so much, I'd rather leave my seat empty than to stay at a table I'm not welcomed at anymore. And so the scripture says that he makes covenant with Jonathan. Hey, Ben, Jonathan, hey, look, you know, I, I've, got to, I've got to do what's best for me. And I'm fast forwarding all the beautiful things associated with it because, amen, there is certainly an appreciation, a bond, and a brotherhood that is formed and forged in the lives of Jonathan, amen, and David. And, and it tells you how much character Jonathan must have because it should have been his. My God. Uh, can we talk about Jonathan for a moment? Because if you keep living life, there are times in life when you're Jonathan. When you, okay, okay. I get it. We all King David. We all, amen, we all, amen, want to sit on the throne. We all want to be used of God. We all want to lead. What if God told you today that I've called you to be Jonathan for a season? That means you won't get the glory. That means you won't get the press conference. That means the parade won't be in your name. That means that you have to give up something of great consequence to you to, to, to allow someone else to flourish. Ooh, we don't, we don't like that preaching. We don't like that preaching. We don't, we don't like that preaching. No, because you want to be a wonder. You want to be celebrated. You want amen to be appreciated at all times. But what if God says, I've put you amen in someone else's life just to look out for them. Just to make sure that God's will and God's movement doesn't die. <laughs> ah, my God. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just walk through the door. If we had more Jonathans in the church, there wouldn't be so much church drama. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preacher, you need to look out for this one. Preacher, you need to look out for that one. Preacher, you need to know. And what you mean, no, I'm not going to let you come up against what God is doing in this season. Could this be a time in your life when God says, I want to use you as Jonathan? Jonathan has just as much value as David, but Jonathan has to, amen, be selfless in this season to say, even though it belongs to me, I want God glorified so much that even if it isn't me, God, ha, let us preserve the light in Israel let us preserve okay my God it takes a lot to be a Jonathan it means you have to have character to be a Jonathan. It means you have to have integrity to be a Jonathan it must mean you must be okay with taking the second seat and the scripture says that Jonathan's desire and most importantly, J- uh, uh, Jonathan's spiritual insight, amen, into what God was doing, the unmistakable hand of God, amen, that was on the life of David. He says to himself, even if it's supposed to fall to family lines, I can't get in the way of what God is doing. This man with, 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 with five smooth thrones and, and he ain't even thrown them all could take down, amen, the champion of a people who have oppressed us. Maybe God is up to something. This man can bring back, amen, foreskins, can bring back some things, <laughs> can, 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 can do some stuff like this. Maybe God's hand is on him. And, and the truth of the matter is, is that many times we have to check our own motives. Do you really want God's will? Or do you want to be popular? Okay. <laughs> uh, because God's will versus your will will bring you to a line where you have to sometimes make mature decisions. What well, it means you got to put your own personal needs to, to, the, to the background. The scripture tells us, amen, that, amen, through the process of events, amen, David finds himself running. David finds himself, amen, uh, in bitter battles with Saul. David finds himself even having to kill folk that come to him with the, amen, with the hairs of Saul. Amen. He even has to, amen, amen, uh, uh, take action against one of his own men and say, what, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. We love to use that scripture, but don't know what the context of it is. This was David defending someone who was trying to kill him. But he says, I don't want to go against God's order. Lift your hand and say, Lord, deliver me from convenience. No, I need you to lift your hands. Come on, make your personal confession. Lord, deliver me from convenience. Deliver me from convenience. Deliver me from convenience. The convenient thing to do would be to get rid of everything that's in my way. Uh, Get rid of every obstacle in my way. Uh, Be petty. Clap back. Uh, God is saying, this Thanksgiving, I want to deliver you from the need for you to have to validate the gift that's on your life. Uh, The call that's on your life. Uh, uh, The skill set you have. I went to school for this and they undervalue me. God says, let me do the validating this Christmas season as a gift for you. I told you I'm having a conversation with myself. Amen. Y'all just happen to be in the room. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Ah, But nevertheless, through the process of events, David refuses to do what's convenient. David refuses to do what's expedient because David trusts the process. How do you know he's a man after God's own heart? Mm. Because when given the chance to advance to him, he says, God, I don't want it if it's not your way. And that's a painful thing to say. That's a painful thing to endure when you know it's for you. When you know this is what God is working through the process of events, the scripture tells us, amen, that we see the the downfall of the house of Saul, amen, falling to sword. We see the rise of David, amen. We see David again, amen, setting up the affairs. And now he has to revisit the covenant that he made with Jonathan, which is when I get on, I promise that if there's anybody associated because of your selflessness, if there's anybody that's still connected to you, I promise they will always have a seat at my table. Uh, The Bible tells us, amen, to the process of events, amen, there is a man by the name of Ziba who gives, amen, a report to David, amen, that says there is one. Mm 
Mm. <laughs> I look at somebody and tell them there's always one. <laughs> ah, there is one. There is one. There is one. There's one, amen, that despite the wrath that has fallen upon Saul's house, there is one that remains, a son of Jonathan. And the scripture says that he comes with a disclaimer. <laughs> ah, yes, he comes with a disclaimer. There is one, but we got to tell you something about him. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you ever been there in life before when somebody has to introduce you with a disclaimer? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, come on, bring it 21st century. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. You got any single friends? I got one, but we call her surround sound because she's mouthy and she's loud. Uh, you hear her coming down the street, right? Anybody ever say, ah, uh, yes, I got a brother, yeah, but, ah, uh, uh, yes, but, uh, you know, the disclaimers associated with you. Uh, the scripture tells us there's a disclaimer that's associated with Mephibosheth. The scripture tells us uh, that David, amen, asks, is there one? And Ziba can't help but, amen, tell David there is one, but the man is lame. He's crippled. He has a disability. And I want you to be aware of his disability because I don't know in what capacity you might want to use him. <laughs> ah, yes, I don't know why there was a need for this introduction. David says, I want to bless him. Ah, David says, I want to restore the favor, but there was a need to put the shade associated with his life. Amen. In the, amen, in the peer view and in the context, amen, of David's decision making. Ah, ah, he has to come full disclosure to say, Mathevaship can't walk. Mathevaship is lame. Ah, ah, and you thought that would have might discourage David ha, ah, from saying maybe we have to do something different with this Mathevaship. But David, the king, just like Jesus, the king. Uh, says despite his ailment, uh, despite his proclivity, despite the challenges with his life, ah, uh, uh, yes, he's still worthy to have a seat at my table. Uh, some of us miss our chances to shout. Ah, uh, uh, yes, because you came to God with some disclaimers. Ah, uh, uh, yes, there's some enemies in your life that says, you sure you want to use them? Ah, uh, uh, yes, they just as inconsistent as anybody. Uh, you sure you want to use them? They're just as fickle as anybody. Ha! You sure you still see value in them? Ha! Ah, yes, they don't have their life together. Ha! But thanks be to God, despite whatever the indictment is against you. Ha! He says there's a spot at my table for you. Ha! And I'm even willing to dress up over the things that are ailments in your life. Ha! Ah, somebody clap your hands in here and give God a praise. Ha, ah, come on, somebody thank God in here. He's willing to look past stuff. Ha, he's willing to look past things that people can't put up with. Ha, things that are deal breakers for other people. I said you missed your chance to praise them. Ha, ha, the things that people can't stand about you. Ha, the things that cause people ha, ha, yes, to relic your even appearance. Ha, thanks be to God. He says, I have need of thee. Ha, I can do something with that. Ha, I can do something even though you can't stand on your own two feet. Ha, I wish I had a thankful praiser in here today. Ha, I can do something with your life. Ha, even though those on the ministerial team don't feel like you're articulate enough. Ha, ah, yes, I can do something with you. Ha, even though there's a criticism and there's a stain on your resume, you're still hired. Ha, and I still have need of thee. Ha, need somebody in here right now ha, to help me give God a praise. Ha, that he is the God that'll look past ha, what people will say. I'll come the next time. Ha, clap your hands and give God praise in this house but there's the clap your hands all ye people and celebrate a God that's willing to look past ha, your blemishes. Look past your defects. Look past your insecurities and your secrets. Come on clap your hands and give God glory. He says, I'm going to look past it. Uh, and at my table, there is a seat for you, Mathevaship. Ah, uh, yes, and, and we love, amen, to stop at that part of the story. Uh, I'd even get into the fact of how, amen, Mathevaship got in that condition. Uh, he got in that condition because of somebody else's neglect. Uh, but look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it don't matter on this side of glory. Ah, uh, yes, it don't. Come on, tell him it don't matter how you got in here today. Ah. Uh, 
Ah, yes, come on, grace folk. Ah, yes, it don't matter how you got up in here. Just be thankful unto God that you're here now. It don't matter who dropped you, who dropped the ball. Ah, yes, your father not being in your life. Ah, yes, big mama favorite, favorite, playing favorites. Ah, yes, the school system, LA, the school district letting you down. The devil is a liar. It don't matter how you came up in here. I'm just glad you're here. Look at somebody tell me, I'm just glad you're here. Mm. The scripture tells us, however, that despite Mephibosheth being at the table, wounded and, 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 and with issues, he now has a prominent role in the administration of King David. And that role allows him to be privy to the rise and fall of King David. My God. Ah, even so to the point, amen, that Mephibosheth is, is able to fulfill some things we don't think he'd ever be able to do. The scripture tells us that somehow this man that is lame on his feet Happens to, 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 to catch the eye of somebody. <laughs> uh, yes, and the scripture says that Mephibosheth becomes a family man. That even though there are things that aren't working in Mephibosheth's life, he still has the ability to procreate and to reproduce. Can I share something with you today? You could just catch this for free. Uh, 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 the things in your life, you can allow them to shut you down and not allow you to be fruitful in life. But I hear God saying enough with the excuses. I just I had to throw that in there for free. It's not even part of the lesson. Uh, yes, it's uh, 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 enough with the excuses. Mm -hmm. Enough with giving your per, yourself permission to underachieve and not produce in life because of somebody else's neglect. Tell somebody, be delivered today. Be delivered today. I feel a prophetic word in this house to tell somebody that just because somebody dropped you does not give you a reason, amen, or excuse not to become a CEO. The devil is a liar. Just because somebody dropped you does not give you an excuse to go backwards in life. Oh, God, I'm feel you, feel you, feel you, feel you, feel you. Ah, yes, come on, Kyron. Yeah. Just because people have disrespected and left you and don't appreciate what the hand of God is on your life does not give you a reason to shut down. Oh God. I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he has a seat at David's table. He has a seat at David's table when David's life goes haywire. He has a seat at David's table when David is celebrating. Ha, the return of the ark uh, he has a seat at David's table when he experiences the joys of David's administration he has a seat at David's table even amen when the men go to war because he's not able to he's lame Mathevashep gets to see some things other people don't get to see <laughs> because he remains at the table Mephibosheth, amen, was at the table, amen, in position, amen, on that day when David looked out and saw Bathsheba bathing. Ha, uh, yes, and he yet remains. Mephibosheth stays in place, my God. Ha, when the prophet Nathan, amen, comes to tell, amen, uh, David the mistakes that he made, and amen, and trying to cover up his sin with Bathsheba. Mathevashep, amen, has a front row seat to hear the prophet Nathan give instruction to David that there is going to be a tear, amen, in his kingdom and administration, but also a tear in his house. Ah, uh, yes, David, amen, ah, uh, uh, yes, would go on to have to live out the prophecy associated, ah, uh, uh, yes, and the controversies associated, amen, with his neglect of his assignment because of his arrogance and his lack, amen, of care for the things of God. The Bible tells us ha, that he has a front row seat, my God, ha, when the fractures start happening in the life and in the house of David. Ha, the Bible tells us that Mephibosheth is there. Ah, uh, yes, when a man, David's son, Amon, would rape his half-sister, Tamar. 
Mephibosheth is there when David does not fully exercise judgment as he should on his own son. Mephibosheth also is there. Uh, yes, when the fallout happens with Absalom uh, wanting to defend the rape, amen, of his sister. Uh, uh, yes, by taking his brother out into the wilderness uh, and killing Ammon uh, or Amon. Ah, uh, uh, yes, the scripture tells us that Mathiva should never loses his seat. When things begin to crumble in the house of King David, the Bible says that David finally wants, yes, to take matters into his hands and to address, amen, Absalom. But Absalom goes away and he moves away from a period of time. Ah, yes, it's Mephibosheth when, amen, at the table when David is counseled ha, concerning Absalom returning back to his company. Ha, ah, yes, it's David, amen, that has to get news that Absalom ha, has been back home for a period of time and David has not yet even had a conversation with Absalom. Mephibosheth gets a first-hand seat ha, of, of the cord being torn. In the administration of David. Ah, yes, one of the amen texts tells us that Absalom sets fire to the place that he's staying. And he burns up acres. Finally to get the attention of David. Ah, yes, for which Absalom would tell David. If you didn't want me to come home. Ah, yes, then why did you have me come back? Why do I have to take this drastic measure for you to talk to me? Ha. And Mephibosheth has to sit and see all of these things happen. Ha. He gets a front row seat as Absalom ha. turns his heart toward taking down his own father. Ha. I don't have enough time to break it all down for you. Ha. But Mephibosheth keeps his seat. Ha, as he sees Absalom ha, usurp authority and power from David ha, by sitting at the gate ha, giving advice to people ha, acting like a governor of Israel ha, trying to swoo the influence of the people ha, because of his charm and his good looks ha. oh I got to get out of here today ha. but Mephibosheth saw it all go down and the Bible says that before David could do anything, yes, to course correct, yes, the Bible says that Absalom had wooed the hearts of Israel. And now David's an outsider of his own kingdom. So to the point that they have to whisk David it away ha, as the speaker calls out ha, that Absalom now has taken Jerusalem ha, can you imagine David ha, now having to move headquarters ha, David now having to run in fear of life over his own son ha, and the scripture says that Mephibosheth ha, holds his place ha, in Jerusalem ha, uh, as David is running for his life, uh, as David has prophets, uh, uh, yes, who are working both ends of the relationship, uh, as David is strategizing, uh, as David is trying to find a way uh, to get his authority back uh, and his kingdom back, uh, the scriptures tell us uh, that David is lied to about Mephibosheth. Zeba, who happens to now manage Mephibosheth's affairs, tells David that Mephibosheth has turned his heart from you. And he remains in Jerusalem because he's no longer faithful to your administration. And the Bible says that David is wandering from pillow to pillow. Post. Ah, yes, from pier to, uh, uh, a pillar to post. In the wilderness, 
strategizing ways to try to get the city of David back and his stronghold over Israel back. How does he do it as his own son has deceived him? The scriptures tell us, yes, that Absalom, yes, has plans to take his own dad out. And Methuselah has a front row seat. I don't know to have the time to tell you how the deal went down. But I'll fast forward to the part that brings us to the text. Because the scripture says, ah, yes, that Absalom's long hair ends up getting stuck in a tree. And as his hair is stuck in a tree, down goes Absalom. And the kingdom is reunited to David. But David is feeling some kind of way. David is feeling some kind of way about his son going down the way he went down. The scriptures tell us here in chapter number 19 of 2 Samuel that David begins to sulk. That David becomes lukewarm about reassuming his post as king. And the Bible says that his men have to come to David and say, David, if you don't get your tail back on this throne, it would have meant that our fighting was in vain. It would have meant that we fought and bled for you for no reason. And the scripture says David reassumes his seat in front of the gate and on the throne of Israel. And the scripture says that David now has to confront Methuselah. Methuselah, who he called out of the house of Saul, that was told was a traitor and a backslider, that went against him to try to regain the house of Saul for Israel. The Bible says that Methuselah makes his way to David, and David has choice words from Methuselah. He says to Methuselah, why didn't you come with me? Why wasn't your loyalty with me? To suffer with me in the wilderness. Why did you stay in Jerusalem? Yes, why was your loyalty not with me? As I'm fighting to keep hold of my administration. Maybe what they told me about you, Methuselah, must be true. But David, in a blind fit of rage, failed to take a look at the continents of Methuselah. Methuselah hadn't groomed his nails. Methuselah hadn't gotten a haircut. Methuselah showed up before the king dirty. And Methuselah says to David, if I would have turned my back on you, why would I have shown up in a posture like this? If I wasn't for you, wouldn't I have shown up sparkling clean with new garments? If I was going to turn my back on you, wouldn't it have been looking better than this? Wouldn't I have at least taken a shower? He says, I waited in my seat while you were going through wilderness. Because I remember the kindness you showed me when I was in Lodabar. Oh, I feel like having church all by myself. He says, I kept my seat, David. I knew you were dealing with tribulations. I knew you were in the wilderness. But I held my seat. I held my covenant. Just as Jonathan made covenant with you, I made covenant with you also. And I was going to stay in position no matter the fallout. Oh, I wish I could tell it all today. Time won't let me deal with all the details. But Methuselah told David, he says, David, I remember where you brought me from. And because I remember where you brought me from, that's reason enough not to let you go. 
Can you squeeze on the neighbor and say, neighbor, let's help the preacher close this message up because I'm getting sleepy and so are you. But say, neighbor, he didn't brought me. I said, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he didn't brought me too far for me to change up now. He didn't look past too much stuff for me to give up my seat in the kingdom now. He didn't excuse too much of shortcomings for me to give up my seat in the administration. The Bible says that Mephibosheth looks David in the eye and says, I remember when nobody cared for me. I remember when nobody loved me. If David was a type of Christ, I could see you and I telling the Lord, I remember when I had nobody to defend me. I remember when I was good for nothing. I remember when I had no hope. I had no life. I had no help. And I couldn't do for myself. But you pulled me up out of Lodabar. You pulled me up out the muck and mark. You picked me up and pulled me up out of Slauson. You pulled me up out of the bed I didn't belong to. You pulled me up out of Skin Row. You pulled me up out of that despair. You pulled me up when I couldn't do for myself. And for this reason, I refuse to abandon my purpose. And I refuse to abandon my mission. And I'm here to tell you, David, there is still, there's still one that's riding for you. There's still one that's on your side. There's still one that's with you, David. Just like I'm lifting my hand to say, Lord, there's still one that loves you. There's still one that'll praise you. There's still one that remembers where you pulled him up out of and what you brought them through. I feel like preaching to myself. You wave your hand and tell the Lord. Lord, there's still one that'll say thank you in a room of a hundred people. If don't nobody open their mouth, there's still one that's crazy about you. There's still one that remembers they were sinking in sin. I told you I was preaching to myself. There's still one that's running for you. There's still one that can't get enough of you. There's still one that thinks you're awesome. There's still one that thinks you're wonderful. There's still one that'll lift their hands and praise you with the whole heart, the whole mind, and their body. Somebody in here be the one and raise your voice and give the Lord praise right now. I got to get out of here. David looks at Mephibosheth. He says, Mephibosheth, because you weren't with me, I'm going to take the property that you had and divide it with Zeba. I'm going to take the things I've invested in you and make you share it with somebody else. But Mephibosheth looks David in the eye and says, I wasn't following you because of the things that you blessed me with. I wasn't following you because of the stuff 
I love you for who you are. And this is when we separate the ten from the one. I'm here today, not because you bless me with an education, not because you bless me with a good family, not because I've got a nice house, cars and things. I'm here because I remember from the wits you brought me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't praise him because of the stuff. I praise him for who he is. He is my joy. He is my peace. Who am I preaching to? I'm not preaching to ten. I'm preaching to the one. There he is the one. I will lift my hand whether I'm eating baloney or steak. I lift my hands whether I dress nice or whether all I have is a t-shirt. I don't praise you because of the stuff you're giving me. I praise you because you're Jehovah Jireh. I praise you because you're my fortress. I praise you because you're my friend. I praise you because you're awesome. I praise you because you're kind. I praise you because you're the lover of my soul. Is there a one? And shake hands with 10 people and say, neighbor, there is one, there is one. A lot of us been delivered, a lot of us been washed, a lot of us been forgiven, a lot of us been healed. A lot of us been rescued, but everybody he's blessed. I ain't a worshiper, but I am that one. I am that guy. I am that sister. I am that believer. If you won't lift your hands, if you won't open your mouth, I will. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Somebody lift your voice and shout, there is one. There's one worshiper that's not afraid to give it all to him. There's one. by the right hand and say neighbor I didn't see a whole lot of stuff in church but it's not enough for me to change my mind about my God I'll bless him whether you bless him or not I'll lift my voice whether you lift your voice or not is there a one in the house Lift your head and shout There is one There is one Hey John there is one There is one There is one That will enter to his case with thanksgiving 
enter into his courts with praise. There is one that will say, Yes, he is. Today, that the Lord has made, there is one that will rejoice. There is one that will say thank you. There is one that will come back and remember the leprosy. Remember being a castaway. Remember falling short. But you picking me up. Is there one? somebody say neighbor I'm not here because of what he gives me tell him I'm here because of who he is to me David thought that if I take the possession away from Mephibosheth that Mephibosheth would switch up. But Mephibosheth, and I'm using eisegetes, that says, there is a one that's with you just because you're God. There is one did I not bless Hallelujah. 10? Yes, Lord. Yes, Weren't nine other healed of leprosy? Yes, Lord. Yet there was one who is a stranger that doesn't belong. <laughs> doesn't belong in this equation of being grateful and appreciative. Mephibosheth had no business being at King David's table. But he says, despite everything you went through, David, I watched you on your good days. I watched you in despair. And I resolved in my spirit that I wasn't going to change my scene. Because I'm not with you because of the things that you done for me <laughs> I'm not with you because of the property you've given me that's what I'm after today the thankful heart I'm not for the convenient praiser today that need me to, need me to prophesy for the next 30 screamers for my next 30 screamers if you scream real loud God's gonna multiply I'm not with that today Today the hands are lifted of those who just remember where you were. Remember your Lord bar. We don't have to do the carrot and the stick to get a worship out of people who aren't with him for stuff. Oh, Shema. Ah. God, I'm with you on good days and I'm with you if we're eating top ramen tonight. God, I'm with you when I've got a six-figure paying job and I'm with you when they hand out the pink slips. Come on, I want those hands lifted. Ah, there is a one. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice. This is a prophetic worship moment. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, there is a one. Lift your hand and tell God there is a one. I'm not changing up on you. I'm not fickle in my appreciation. I remember where I was. I remember what it was to be broken and hopeless. And you brought me out of the Mari clay. And you put a, my feet on a rock to say. So I'm lifting my hands to say there is one. And there will always be one. And if my neighbor don't lift their voice, I'm going to lift my voice. 
and if everybody around me forgets where their load of heart was in my heart is cemented worship and appreciation unto you there is one there is one there is one there is one the question is will you be as faithful to him as he has been to you I'm lifting my hands to say there is one there is one there is one there is one the praisers are the ten but the worshiper is the one you see the praisers got healing but the worshiper got wholeness and for some of you, you don't need healing today. You need wholeness. And God says it's in your worship because I'm here for the one. For the one that comes back. God says, I will catch it up for you and make it appear as if it never happened before. Consider the condition of leprosy, the withering of the skin consider the disease the harm and trauma that it places on the body and to be cured means I no longer have to go around saying I'm unclean I'm unclean I'm unclean but wholeness through worship through coming back means no scars no blemishes no defects no reminder of what was and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how a new history is created. Because the worshiper remembers how bad it was and how powerful his favor was toward me. And I can't help but thank him. And I can't help but be appreciative. And I can't help but not complain. This is the altar call. We're going to do this real quickly because we're getting out of here at one o'clock. So if you are the one, get to the altar as quickly as possible. The one that wants healing or prayer or the one that just wants to come back and say thank you, move as quickly as possible. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's either you or it's not. Either your heart is grateful to come back and say, I want to thank you. Either you stand in need of God to do something supernatural in your life. Either you're the one who says, God, I want to be free and I want forgiveness of sin and I want eternal life through water baptism in Jesus' name and the gift of the Holy Ghost or not. Either I want forgiveness today or I don't. Come on. You at home. Put that number in the chat section. Uh, Sister Michaela, 323-299-2591. Wherever you are in Los Angeles, we'll come grab you if you need to. You can be saved today. You can be washed today. All the things that I've been through. Today is your day. I am the one. I'm coming to the altar to say I'm guilty. I am the one. I am the one. I am the one that needs another touch, that needs strengthening, that needs help on my spiritual journey. Stop making this place, stop making the altar a place of intimidation. There's nothing wrong with coming to this altar saying, God, strengthen me. It's commendable that in the day of the altar call, you come and say, God, I just need your touch. I just need your win. I just need your help. It's for you. 
come without money come without price come without prejudice if you need water baptism in Jesus name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost today is your day you can receive it you can receive strength you can receive empowerment this is the day this is the day God says I'm coming to send someone to your personal Lodabar <laughs> Uh, Lodabar can mean whatever you need it to mean for you. It could be a place of despair, a place of hopelessness, or just where you are in life right now. But God is saying, I'm coming to Lodabar to tell you there's, there's space at the table. I have need of you. Ah, I have need. I need you to complete my cabinet. I need you to complete my picture. I need you to complete my purpose here on earth as it is in heaven. There is one. There is one. I am the one. I am the one. I am the one. Y'all never understand my praise. Don't try to figure it out. My last call, last call. You are the one. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, bring your marriage to the altar. Bring, bring your singleness to the altar. Bring your career decisions to the altar. Come on, bring those things. Bring your pains. Today is your day. Today is your day. Raise your hand if you got the Holy Ghost. I just want to see. All right. Raise your hand if you've been water baptized in Jesus' name. If not, this is your day. This is your day. Not to worship Him. I've been through too much. Oh, too much. Not to worship him. Come on, everybody, lift your hand. I've been through too much. I've been through too much. Not to worship him. Come on, lift up that worship. I've been through too much. Not to worship him. To worship him. Too much. I must worship. You worship him. Yeah. Been through too much. Been through too much. Nah. 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 I've been through too much. Been through too much. Been through too much. I must worship him. I'm going to make it up one day, Bethesda. <laughs> Tired in my body. I'm going to make it up to y'all. I'm going to preach that one time with full strength. Clap your hands and give God praise. Thank you to our ministerial team. I'm going to ask, amen. Who's got the badge today? Come on, Sister Sandra. Amen. And then Sister Green is coming. We're moving real quickly. Amen. Amen. There's still a soul at this altar, so keep a praying spirit. While they're doing that, prepare your hearts to give. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask, amen, D ushers just to keep the doors amen amen we're going to be out of here in the next few moments i just came back to say thank you jesus i'm that one how many more do we have here let's give the lord a hand praise for this beautiful message that our our pastor has just delivered unto us it was reason to think to to give appreciation to the Lord, to be thankful, because we are a chosen generation. All right, we are a chosen people. Matter of fact, I forgot my phone, because I, I had down there uh, First Peter, one, no, two and nine. 
I shouldn't be trying to go to memory, but anybody know that scripture? We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. He brought us out of darkness. I, there's some few stanzas I skipped over, but uh, he made a co covenant with our, our uh, with us and our relatives and we are the seed of Abraham, all of that. And I think we should be grateful and thankful because everybody didn't get it. Everybody is not. And so, but we are here today. We are chosen and we have alerted to the cause. And this week, Pastor has, has been, you know, I, I when I got the Holy Ghost, uh, wanted to know the new members class to, um, to know how the Holy Ghost work. You know, what you, what you do, what makes you think, you know, uh, okay, when is this the Holy Ghost? When is this the Holy Ghost? If you listen to Wednesday night Bible study, you will find out. I found out. I am finding out. Wednesday night Bible study is the place to be. If you don't know, you can find out. Just stay tuned. Now, what I'm here for is to welcome our visitors online and in the sanctuary. I praise God to be able to stand here before you, to come back and say thank you. <laughs> I remember crawling out when the Lord brought me out of looking on that ground for the rock and pulling me up to find my living rock. I thank you, Jesus. I praise your name. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. My annual is coming up, and I, I want to give a more of a of a, a testimony later on. I tell you. Okay. So what am I here for again? To welcome the visitors here. All right. So um, from on behalf of our president of the I We Pot I We I P Y. PU of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, the president, our pastor, who happens to be the pastor of Bethesda Temple Apostolic Church, where the waters are troubled every time we come in here. You can't be delivered. You can't be set free. Whatever you come here for can happen for you. Be intentional. Amen. So we have first, uh, we're very happy that you came here to dwell with us today. All right, so uh, you can wave your hand or you can stand up. We appreciate you. Roscoe Brown. Oh, he must, he's a visitor from, uh, uh, oh, Bethany. Okay. So um, I don't see him right now, but we'll wave at him. Wait for him. All right, so we have Lorenzo Caston and um, Madis Madison Caston, Ingrid Caston. They're all guests of Sister Wendy. All right. And we have Aiden Ware. And D. John Wheeler, they are guests of Santino. Wave your hand and stand up. They are guests of Santino. All right. Who is the son of Sister Pruitt. <laughs> all right, Sister Pruitt has a few guests, Messiah, Major, and Kaylin. They're all in Children's Church. <laughs> Amen. We appreciate you, and we know that you have in, um, been blessed by the message today and we appreciate you and um, so we you're inviting we're inviting you back anytime thank you for coming amen praise the lord everybody i'm glad you're here i'm glad i'm here and i'm glad i got it when i did amen amen we have a few announcements this morning um the, of course uh as we started at the beginning of the month this is a month of thanksgiving and not complaining. Amen. And on um, Wednesday, we will have our Thanksgiving service at 12 noon, hour of power. And we will not have our regular um, Wednesday uh, prayer service. 
Everybody is invited here in the sanctuary. Also, we will not have Bible study, and we will not have prayer on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. But on Friday, we will have our prayer service at 12 noon. We want to keep you reminded of our prayer that we have on Saturday mornings where the, where the Lord is doing wonderful things. And, um, and also, um, we have Wednesday, next Wednesday, we'll be back with our regular Bible study on Facebook Live. That concludes our announcements for today. We pray that you will be here on Wednesday at 12 noon where we can give our testimonies, where we can give thanks unto God. And we coming in here with a mind of thanksgiving and not of complaining. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Can we give God a hand praise for our services today, amen? Somebody clap your hands for Sunday school. Hallelujah, amen. God is doing great things here, amen. We hope that you feel welcome, amen. To all of our guests and visitors, y'all know how we do. Let's welcome them, let's welcome them, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us this day, amen. May the favor of God go with you, amen. Make sure we got everybody, amen. <laughs> Amen. We hope that you, amen, have a very safe week. Amen. With your gifts, come on. Let's prepare our hearts to give. Amen. Prepare our hearts to give. Uh, for those who are giving electronically, we have our credit card machine to my left, your right, on the screen. I'm not sure if they're going to put it up or not, but we have our cash app. If you need an envelope, just raise your hand. We got you. Amen. Our cash app information and, and Zelle information is on there. Amen. You can be a blessing to us. Those of you that are watching online, you can give as well. Amen. We're looking forward to, amen, God blessing us. In this heart, in this season, amen, of, of thanksgiving, amen, we want to give an offering unto our God that says we appreciate you, amen, because we know, amen, that you're blessing, amen. One preacher challenged me one time and told me that every time I don't tithe, I'm telling God he's a liar. And I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that. He says, that means that you tell me that God's not blessing you in no capacity. So I can look at you and tell that God is doing, don't make God out a liar. Amen. If he's increasing you, he's increasing you. Amen. So let's get back unto him what he's blessed us with. Amen. 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 Raise it up. Raise it up. Amen. We have cash app, credit card. Amen. Check or ice. Nobody should be seedless in this season. Amen. Amen. This season of harvest is because of what we've seeded down through the years. Father, we thank you for every gift that you've blessed us with. We thank you for your favor. We bless you, O oh God, for how you're overflowing in our lives. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus this day that you would multiply, do the exceeding abundantly and above all. We can ask, I think, even now, blow on my money, blow on the business concepts, ideas, blow in it, O oh God. We claim generational wealth, but importantly, O oh God, we know that doors and windows are coming to us. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen and amen. Come on, bring your gifts as quickly as you can. Amen. Hallelujah. Give us a quick second. Amen. And we're getting out of here. We thank you for your giving, for your liberality. Just hold your place one quick second. Come on, sis, Mother Christy. Amen. Come on, Mother Christy. Amen. We're going to let her do the honors of closing us out today. Amen. Amen. Again, we're looking forward to seeing you this week. Amen. For our midweek worship services. God bless you, ushers. Come on, give God a hand praise for our ushers. Amen. Amen. Y'all come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Amen. I want to remind you again, our Thanksgiving service, we're going to do a little earlier, amen, so that you can be with your family on Thursday, amen. We're going to do it on Thursday at noon, so noon, pull up here, take a half hour for lunch, amen, and come be, or an hour for lunch, amen, and come be blessed, 
Amen. Amen. Right here. Amen. Brother Christy, if you don't mind closing this out. Father, again, we thank you for those seeds. We ask that you would multiply again and do exceeding and abundantly. But while we ask, we're thinking in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. I just want to give thanks this afternoon to our dear pastor. Last week I came in service, I was so sick, hallelujah. He caused um, alcohol, he said, I have to come to for anything, can come up for, um, not, if I'm not feeling sick, not me special, anybody not feeling well, or not consecration alone, but if not feeling well, need prayer for healing and things like that. So I feel like I should come up because I wasn't well at all. And I came up here and Pastor touched me. The neck, a pain in my neck from last week couldn't turn. My daughter was to take me, took me to the doctor last Wednesday, but through the weather, bad weather, the rain comes, I couldn't make it to see the doctor. I couldn't turn my neck around no way. And then I said, when I to come to service Sunday, she couldn't make it because she had an exam, was to took her exam Sunday. She take me out to church, but she said, Mama, you can make it on your own. I said, I'm going to make it. When I live in the house, my pressure was 168. She said, no, you cannot make it. I said, if I should die on pilgrim journey, Ashama, heaven is my home. I'm going to service. Please drop me at church. I feel much better. And she did. And when I came out there, the water out there, see me, see I couldn't make it. He come and he take me up to the door. And I came inside and I rejoiced. And I did rejoice and feel better for a prayer and ask the Lord to make her feel much better more when I came in this morning. And when Pastor gave the call that I should come up. Not, not me especially, he said it. And I get up and come, and when he touched me, I feel it, Hiroshima. I feel like the pain was moving in my neck, I'm moving, and I get in the Holy Ghost. Too. And from that day, my neck is free, can turn, I don't see a doctor from that. So I just come to give thanks, prayer is the key. We have to believe and know that the dear Lord is able. And prayer is the key. So I thank you, Pastor. I just want to say thank you. That's the reason why I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, somebody. Give God a hand praise for Mother Christy. Amen. I said we could do better than that. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a praise. We're standing to our feet. Amen. To be dismissed. We look forward to seeing you Wednesday. Wednesday. Everybody say Wednesday. Wednesday at 12 o'clock is our Thanksgiving service, all right? Not Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday, okay? Thursday, we'll let you be home, amen? So Wednesday, 12 o'clock, amen. We're looking forward to that. No prayer on Thursday. You can pray with your family over the food, but we'll be on there Black Friday, of course, amen? <laughs> amen. All hearts and minds clear, amen. We thank God for you. We certainly thank God uh, for you being with us in this journey of faith. Keep being the one. Keep being the one. Don't you come up and forget God. Uh, keep being the one. Father, we thank you for your word. For your word is life. Thank you for the reminder, oh God. Hallelujah, of where you brought us. Oh God, we don't chase you for the stuff. We're not with you because of the benefits. We're with you because you first loved us. When we couldn't love ourselves I pray a strength and an empowerment, a supernatural strength over every believer, over every family, over every heart that's here today. I pray, oh God, that you provide them clarity and direction. I pray that you would exchange their complaints about their loader bar for an appreciation, oh God, for the things that you're doing in their lives. I pray, oh God, that you go above and beyond their hopes, hearts, imagine beyond what they can think or fathom, oh God. And I pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you would allow a rejoicing to overwhelm them. The clouds of confusion and discouragement, despair, we rebuke them in the name of Jesus. We're walking out of this place with the newness of life and with a new focus and with a new direction. 
to give you praise always. Bless my brother. Bless my sister. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. May the grace of God go with you. In Jesus' name.